I will get to. To give you an idea of how bad it is, and I don't mean to uh, duplicate anything that has been said before me because none of us, none of us conferred with each other about what we we're going to say and how we we're going to say it today. Let me quote from a Facebook post Senator Alan Clark issued on October 21st. He said, and I quote, I watched the DCFS worker lie on the stand. While lying on the stand, she truthfully admitted lying to the parents in order to remove a child. I have watched a Crimes Against Children Division investigator admit on the witness stand that she did not have the evidence necessary and clearly spelled out in the manual to make even a single one of the several true findings that had been made in the investigation in question. That is compounded when one knows that she and her supervisor's supervisor have testified to a legislative committee that all three work together to make the decision of true findings which makes the parents guilty without a trial and without facing their accusers. I watched the DHS attorney argue to the judge in an appeal that this lack of evidence should not matter, that the true findings should be upheld. I have watched the state's expert witness attempt to mislead the court by saying that a substance was illegal. Under cross-examination, the expert witness admitted that the substance was illegal in Canada, but perfectly legal in the United States. I have strong, I believe incontrovertible evidence that the head of a state or agency perjured himself before a state committee. If it were not for costing good people their jobs, we could prove that perjury occurred, but that person's job was threatened. We have an email that strongly indicates the state persecuted a family knowing they were not guilty. If the state did not cover up that email, the state was, at the very least, grossly negligent. It tried to keep the email from being made public with further cover-up by claiming we are protecting children and families and threatening legislators with being criminal if they even share the evidence of the cover-up with each other. These things have happened while those participating were fully aware that state legislators were present and observing. What happens when we're not there? This whole system needs to be opened up, aired out, and disinfected. Unquote. That, that is the quote from Alan Clark's Facebook message from October 21st. About the same time that he said he was taking the gloves off in this fight against DHS. 26 days later, he was removed from the chairmanship of the Joint Performance Review Committee, the position from which he was attempting to hold DCFS and the State Police Crimes Against Children Division accountable. Now, you'll be told that nothing underhanded was done. You'll be told that rotating senators in and out of chairmanships of committees on an annual or biannual basis is a regular occurrence and that if a senator with more seniority than the current chairman of the committee requests to replace the chairman, Senate rules say she gets it. Regardless of all that, I'm here to tell you that the loudest voice in the Senate to try to stop the social workers from destroying families has now been deprived of a committee chairmanship with which to continue his work. And he has been replaced by a senator who has been a consistent defender of the status quo. I'll cite one example of what I mean about how the incoming chairman, Senator Irvin, seems to view the child welfare system and then we'll move on. When Attorney Joe Churchwell told the Joint Performance Review Committee that DCFS caseworkers should at least have to wear body cams when interacting with families, that they should at least have to give the parents Miranda warnings, and that they should at least not try to enter homes against a parent's will without a warrant. Senator Irvin expressed her puzzlement as to why Attorney Churchwell would suggest measures that would, in her mind, hinder investigations. The idea that people who should be presumed innocent 
should be able to invoke their constitutional rights against government intrusion seems to have been lost upon Senator Irvin. What a puzzlement. Why, Joe, why, why would you? Why would you want to impede and investigate? I don't, I don't get what. I mean... I cannot avoid predicting that instead of continuing Alan Clark's work of investigating government workers, she seems destined, barring divine intervention, to close ranks with a bureaucracy that continues to victimize Arkansas families. But this, this is not a rally for Alan Clark. This is a rally for something he ex expressed a deep concern for, and that is protecting the constitutional rights of Arkansas families. Thank you. Brother Hal Stanley jumped, jump started my brain last night by reminding me that our elected representatives, whether in the State House or the State Senate, are supposed to represent us. And yet, men, yet many of them do not. Alan Clark, Mickey Gates, Laurie Rushing, Linda Collins Smith, Kim Hammer, and a few of the other ones that Joe Churchwell mentioned have been attempting to investigate our child welfare system with an eye to reform it to protect families' constitutional rights. But they seem to be voices crying in the wilderness. The majority of our 135 state legislators seem to be uninterested in actually representing their constituents in this fundamental matter of protecting our constitutional rights. The Fourth Amendment to the United States Constitution clearly states that you can't just barge into a person's home without a warrant. And yet our social workers do precisely that on a regular basis. And our legislature does not seem to have the desire to make them stop entering our homes in such an unconstitutional manner, much less to make them stop illegally taking our children away, even without charging us with a crime. And so, they're innocent victims. People like Alan Michelle Stanley and their children wonder why our elected representatives refuse to represent us. Now, as I pondered that question after I got off the phone with Brother Hal last night, it occurred to me, as I thought about it, that surely a majority of our fellow citizens in this beautiful state cannot approve of the way that our social workers deceive us. Surely, a majority of our fellow citizens in this beautiful natural state cannot approve of the way our social workers, <coughs> pardon me, barge into our homes, kidnap our children, put our names on child register with no evidence to support their so-called true findings, which time and time again have proven to be false. They kidnap our children, they lie to us, they lie about us under oath, they refuse to refer for prosecution people who break the law by making false child abuse claims. Surely, a majority of our Kansans must be against all these despicable violations of our constitutional rights. Am I right? And then, it came to me. Yes, of course. Of course the majority of our Kansans are against government agents abusing our families under the color of the law. Of course they are. Of course our fellow citizens are. And I'll bet you, it probably doesn't much matter whether they think of themselves as Republicans or Democrats, or Libertarians, or Independents, or Green Party, or just downright non-denominational. I'll bet you a majority of our fellow citizens in Arkansas, no way they're going to go with that. So, what do we do here in Arkansas when we believe that the government must change but our elected representatives disagree. Well, what I've seen in the two and a half years that I've been here, we get an initiative on the next ballot.
Shalom.